So they're telling her what they see, these giants. They have good vision. They're giants. Tell her, I see, yeah, he's, he's tying them, and he has a knife in his hand. And then Hashem makes the clouds come and block the vision. That's the, that's the moment of truth for Sarai Menu. That's the moment of truth for Sarai Menu. The giants now can't see. They can't see what's happening. So they can't tell, hey, by the way, oh, he did it, he didn't do it. They don't know what happened. That's the moment of truth where Sarai Menu is now crying her eyes out, not knowing what's happening. Is, is the world going to be destroyed in a moment or not? This is like one of those uh, action movies I remember I saw as a kid where there was always, the world was always about to explode or get destroyed by some bomb or some meteor or something, but something would always happen in the last minute to save the world. So in essence, this is happening, but it actually happened in real life. But now she doesn't know what's happening. There's no news. But then suddenly, another guy comes in which is also the Satan, but now he's dressed up as something else. And he says to her, hey, don't worry, uh, just so you know, I just saw your uh, son, Yitzchak, and Avram, they, uh, they were just walking, they walked down the mountain. Everything was good. From happiness, from happiness, she died. From happiness, she died. Equivalent of a heart attack. This is why Chazal teaches that when you're about to give someone good news or bad news, but even good news, specifically good news, you have to give it to them in pieces. Like if it's a big thing, like for example, there's a story, it's a funny story, but it's very, very real. Two guys are friends, one of them is very, very poor. And the guy that's not, you know, he's also poor, but not as poor as the other guy. He says, why don't you buy a lotto ticket? Why don't you buy a lotto ticket? He says, ah, me, my luck. I can't even win a bubble gum. I can't win. You want me to buy a lotto ticket? He goes, what do you care? It's one dollar. Ask somebody to give you a dollar. Buy a lotto ticket. He's bothering him the whole day. Buy a lotto ticket. Buy a lotto ticket. Buy a lotto ticket. Eventually, the guy says, okay, you know what? I'll buy a lotto ticket. What is it? One dollar. I'll buy a lotto ticket. So he buys a lot of tickets, but if he has such bad luck his whole life, he forgets about the ticket. A couple of days pass, his friend sees the numbers on the, uh, you know, on one of these billboards, remembers that his friend has these numbers. He looks at the, his friend's t- numbers, he sees his friend won. Now, if he knows this guy, for him, 50 bucks is a lot of money. If he tells him, listen, you just won $10 million, $100 million, a billion dollars, whatever they people win in a lot of these days. The guy's going to have a heart attack and die. She doesn't know what to do. He says, you know what? I have an idea. He goes to a doctor. He says, listen, you have to tell my friend something. What do you have to tell your friend? You have to tell my friend he won the lotto. Did he? Yes, he won the lotto. Okay, bring him here. So he tells him, listen, you don't look so good. Why don't we go to the doctor? No, no, I don't have any money for a doctor. He goes, no, no, don't worry about it. It's a friend of mine. I know this doctor. Come with me to the doctor. I'll take care of you for free. He goes, oh, okay, I'll go to the doctor. You say I don't look so good. You're my buddy. Why not? He goes to the doctor. So the doctor is checking him, faking it like something is really wrong. And he asks, the doctor starts talking to him because the doctor knows if I tell him right now you want $100 million, he's going to die. He's going to get a heart attack, this guy. So the doctor says to him, listen, your friend told me that you had a lotto ticket. He goes, yeah, yeah, I forgot about this lotto ticket. Wait, he told you about my lotto ticket? He goes, yeah, the lotto ticket. What if you won? What do you mean if I won? He goes, what if you won, I don't know, $500? The guy's like, wow, $500? You know what I can do with $500? $500, I can live a whole month. $500. $500? $500, I can live a whole month. I can eat. I can go to get a motel and, uh, and shower for the first time in a few months. You know, I could do a 500 guy is so happy just talking about some fake $500 that he doesn't have. So the doctor's like, okay, okay, I got to take it easy on this guy. He goes, what if you won $5,000? $5,000. $5,000, doc. Are you serious? What do you want? Mate, that's a dream come true. Five, you know what I can do with $5,000? $5,000, I'm already rich. What else do I need to ask? 
out of the five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. It changed my whole life. The doctor says, "What if you won fifty thousand dollars?" The guy starts looking at the doctor. He goes, "What do you have all these questions? What do you care about this fifty thousand? Fifty thousand. You only can do it five. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. I'm taking everybody I know to be to lunch." So the doctor sees this guy is, you know, okay. Well, maybe by now it's okay. Maybe by now I can tell him. I already tested him a few times. What if you won the jackpot? You won a hundred million dollars. A homeless guy, poor guy. This is not even a part of his imagination. So he says to the doc, he goes, Doc, if I won a hundred million dollars, I'm giving you fifty. The doctor drops dead. <laughs> So Chazal teach us, when you give somebody good news, you have to be careful. This is what we're going to learn in a couple of weeks after they find out that Yosef is still alive. Before they tell Yaakov that Yosef is still alive after 22 years of not seeing his son, they send Serach bat Asher, Serach the daughter of Asher, to go sing to go sing to her grandfather, Yaakov, and put him in a good mood. What's he singing? Yosef is still alive, and he's the king of Egypt. Like in the background, like elevator music. And that got him into a good mood, so by the time they actually told him, he was ready for it. Because they knew that if they tell him right away, he could kill him. Where they learn it from? Sarai Menu. When the Satan told her, Hey, your son... Is alive and well. It was too much for her. She died. Now, of course, Chazal says that she lived exactly 127 years like she was supposed to. This was just the way she died was surprising, and it was actually a midah kineged midah punishment for laughing when the angels told her that she's going to have a son. So, first, the first punishment was telling her, no. You don't have a son, which is what she believes. She's not going to have a son. And then tell him, no, you do have a son. He's alive. When she laughed about it. So it's midak yeneged midak, measure for measure. So the way she died. But nonetheless, for people like us, what she did was all mitzvot. I could sing in the background.